All right, so to do this job, first things first, got to go underneath and remove that skid plate. Then you come back up top and remove the plastics on the side for the fenders. And of course you got to remove the front bumper. So this is our second time replacing, well this is going to be our second time replacing this radiator. Um, I think I've only seen maybe one video on how to do so. So I figured why not in the middle of doing this, make a video on how to change a radiator on a Grand Cherokee from 2011 to 2020, 2021. So after you get the, re the bumper removed, what you're gonna wanna do is take off your air box, don't mind that filter, got another one. And then after you take off the air box, make sure you disconnect your, the plug off the back side of it so you don't break it. Then, so you don't lose bolts, smart thing would be to put the bolts back in. And as he's doing now, make sure you get all the clips off because this top radiator support is gonna have to come off. So these two bolts, Right here, make sure you remove those on both sides. Uh, this bracket is two brackets. One goes there, other one goes there. Make sure you remove those. This also has to come off um, for the hood latch. After you remove that, then this top piece of the radiator support should come off. Um, and then once we get all that off, then I'll put it back on. I'm skipping around a lot, but if you got the means to shop like where I work at, where you can do things like, you know what I'm doing, it helps get easy access with stuff like this. So what you want to do is come down, or if you can't come down, jack it up, get up under it enough to the point to where you can get to the bottom of the radiator hose. Once you can do that, easy access. You don't necessarily have to remove the skid plate to do it. I didn't do it last time, but it just makes things things easier this time doing it. So I'm gonna get that off and after that drain it out and then we're gonna pull it out. Alright so once you get to the point where you get the top hose off, the lower hose off Once you get to the point where you get that, again, you can start kind of moving things around. But before you do that, there's a couple of things that you have to watch for as you're pulling it out. So you have these AC lines right here for the, through the condenser. Then you have this bracket right there. There's also another one on the other side. And you also have these right here. Um, the other lines to the condenser. Well, the power steering, I'm sorry. So these slide into the side of the radiator. So as you're trying to pull the radiator out, you have to separate it from the condenser. After you do that, sorry about that camera angle. After you do that, you pull these out. Once you pull them out, you can see they're loose. Then they're no longer a part of the radiator. Then you can kind of, you have to be cautious, but you can pull the radiator out without pulling the condenser out. So. Once we get to that point and we get everything out, I'll cut it back on.
got some more fighting than what we wanted to deal with. It wasn't that bad. We got it out. So, um, the looks of it. I can't really tell other than it looks like the plastic just let go or it really wasn't sealed. Mind you, this radiator is not that old. Um, it's literally like five months old. So, and I know some of y'all gonna say, why did I pull the hose off instead of pulling this out? I ain't feel like waiting forever for all that drain out. So we pulled it the way we wanted to pull it. But it looks like, oh yeah, I see it now. So they're close, they're close. Then it starts peeling back, peeling back, peeling back. So that's exactly what happened. So, never had it like overheat or anything like that. It was just constantly losing cooling. Um, it would never ever overheat, but you don't want air in your system. So that's why I went ahead and just changed it out. You're gonna wanna not forget these on both sides. And the new one is getting ready to go in and I'll do another time lapse and of us throwing it back together. Can, it's going to be a little difficult but it's not it's not too bad so when you're putting it back in you have to make sure that the condenser is locked with the radiator and what I mean by that is if you look right here this little black tab right there is what the condenser is going to sit in so you have to make sure that one is sitting in there and you have to make sure that one is going to sit in, be sitting in there after you get that done Everything should line up. You can push this in to lock it. Make sure you reattach. Where is she at? Make sure you reattach the radiator fan plug so you don't overheat. Then after you do that, then you can start putting everything back together again. So there you have it. That's basically how you change a radiator in a 2014 Summit Grand Cherokee with the 5.7. It's not that hard. I didn't really cover things that uh, are, you know, should be self-explanatory as far as like the sensor goes and all that stuff. Uh, everything else is fairly easy, but uh, that's basically it for the most part. So. After I put the clips back in and then put the covers back on, on both sides, uh, gonna put some coolant in it and bleed it and that'll be it. So thanks for watching. And no, yeah, don't forget, clean this off and uh, put the skip tape back on on the bottom. But other than that, that's basically it. Uh, like I said, it's not a hard job. 
it's something you can do at home. You know, I'm at one of my, uh, another store of ours. Um, I'm off today, so this store is not as busy as our other stores. So I came over here and used up the bay to get this done. It needed to be done for a while. And it's been really cold over here lately. Uh, we had snow two weeks back to back and I needed to get this done. Everything's back together. The radiator's bled. Uh, coolant tanks are right where they're supposed to be at. A little bit over a quarter. Um, everything's doing good. So, like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.